And yeah, I, I get started. So first, I just want everyone here, if you, raise, if you play a sport, please raise your hand. All right, look around. What sort of sport you got? Oh, Alex, what sport? Uh, I'm a diver. Diver? All right. I'm a swimmer. Swimmer? I run track and field. Track and field? Baseball, you? Tennis. Tennis, you? Oh, our competitive dance. Competitive dance. What about you, SP? Cheer. Cheer. You got any other sports? Soccer. Soccer. Fencing. What? Fencing. What's that? Fencing. You were fencing? Whoa, he does fencing. <laughs> Wait, who else? Anyone else? Maddox, tennis? Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so basically, y'all can't tell. You know, like, chorus and music are way. I meant athletics and music, they kind of go hand in hand. And that's kind of what I wanted to figure out with my capstone presentation and everything. So if you would just go to the next side. I would like to highlight one of our most decorated athletes in the movie academy, Mr. Ross. Can we give a hand for Mr. Ross? <laughs> I've had the pleasure to follow Mr. Ross on Strava which is a, it's an, a running app, or a, but he does cycling. And so, Mr. Rots, this year, I wanted to give you a couple of his statistics. He has done 1,425 miles of biking since January this year. That's in the, in the past four months. Three and a half months. <laughs> 62,000 feet of elevation. All the time, he has done over 10,000 miles of cycling. And he usually averages around, y'all know he like does all the things he does as a course teacher and averages 100 miles a week on the bicycle. A week. I don't know where he fits it all in, but ever, yeah. So, I mean, I just wanted to highlight Mr. Ross, you know, kind of an inspiration. And, um, and yeah, all right, next slide. So basically the things I want to talk about today, the correlations between athletics and music is really the diaphragm control the focus that good breathing is the basis for cardio and chorus, um, the principle of pattern, how patterns dictate a rhythm, a song, and the pace of motion, and uh, heart rate, and how music contributes to a VO2 max. So, next slide. So yeah, diaphragm control. I just wanted to talk to you all about how good breathing is the basis for cardio and chorus. So, the correlation between cardio and chorus is Y'all heard about the diaphragm, right? You know, when Lloyd comes in here, Patrick comes in here, and he's like talking about his lift rolls, and he talks about like expanding your rib cage and everything. You know, that's the diaphragm, right? This muscle right here underneath your lungs. And this is the key. This is the key muscle for good breath inhalation. Um, it offers it offers a basis for breath support instead of getting short breaths of energy and everything. Then it's it's more just expansive down here and. Um, and that's how you can really fill up your oxygen for um, maximum, like for those long phrases. Um, helps you stack, you don't have to do as much staggered breathing. And uh, creates less vocal tension, that's why you do the lift drills. And um, so with athletics, the connection with this is basically better breathing brings more oxygen in your body, which helps your red blood cell count, and therefore you get better blood flow around your body. And that helps you perform better, contracting um, muscles quicker, you know, I mean, be more athletic. Um, and so that's why in the athletics, you know, if you're ever like, oh, why do I gotta do a plank? Why are we doing these exercises in the gym that build my core? You know, half of that reason is just so that you can have the stability of the diaphragm and strengthen that diaphragm so you can have good respiratory movement throughout your body. So, all right, and then, yeah. next slide. The principle of pattern. Um, so I did a lot of work on the principle of pattern. So, you know, it, I feel like it's it's pretty obvious, but, you know, if you really think about it, music is all just patterns, one and two and three and four and, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you know, all we do is really just like we focus on these patterns, scale by scale, and time signatures, I mean, so I was looking at time signatures, they kind of look like a fraction, you know what I mean? And I was like, and then I started doing some case studies between music and mathematics back, um, back in November. And what I found from uh, the the study done by Grand Canyon University and University of North Texas is um, basically that um, so music can like create these neural pathways in the brain that connect to the neocortex. 
And so they found out, and so that's why they found out that music and mathematics were good stimuli for these uh, neural pathways because they both relied on this principle of activating patterns. And so that led to fun the frontal cortex and then spread to the rest of the neocortex and, uh, and that helped memory association. So modern brain mapping techniques have indicated that music can bridge like the hemispheres of the brain um, and they can, and they, and they, and they can, yeah, and so, <laughs> and they can do that and so like they don't know any other processes that um, are able to do that right now and as well as music can in the brain. And so I thought it was kind of cool that the principles pattern in music kind of fuels its dominance in like humans' mental capacity. Um, and so if you want to go to the next slide, how this connects back to running is, so basically this is our list of the parts of the neocortex that affect it. And so the neocortex is really a, a, a sheet of tissue that lies around the outside of the brain. And so it affects the temp, or it affects the cardio lobe, it's the motor, motor cortex, the ocular lobe, which is the brain center for rhythm and coordination, the temporal lobe, which regulates tension, tone, and structure, and the frontal lobe, which, and the cerebellum, which regulate motion. And so I think it's kind of cool that like, all these are together encompassed by music and they're all each highlighted. And so by high, I highlight, highlighted the temporal lobe especially because the temporal lobe is in charge of releasing cord, uh, cortisol. And basically what cortisol is, is a stress hormone. And so when you release the stress hormone, it helps, um, it's like, and so music, it actually decreases the amount of cortisol that is released. So um, you're less stressed out, less fatigued, Performing physical exercise, and um, so yeah, when you get influenced from music, you actually perform better. And we're going into my next slide. Um, uh, so, so this is from the American Lung Association, and working about how pacing and motion how they work together. Um, I'm a runner, so I kind of focus more on running. And basically, here I found that you know rhythmic breathing. This is uh, from the American Lung Association. Rhythmic breathing can make you more aware of the need for a longer time to inhale the oxygen needed for high intensity exercises like running. And so um, an interesting statistic is um, when you're like running at a, like a race pace, your the impact of your foot on the ground is actually three to two to three times your body weight. And so when you're doing that, if you think about that, like that's like 400, 500 pounds pressure, you know, then on your foot, if you're doing that at a moment when you're excelled, meaning you don't have any air support in your body, and you're doing that with the same foot repeatedly, you're gonna get injured, right? Because it's always catching you at your most unstable time. And so most runners focus on a three-step or five-step pattern of you know in, of exchanging. So on your first exhale, you're on your left foot, your second one, you're on your right foot. And so you can do this with a three-step or a five-step pattern, kind of like three on your inhale, two on your exhale, or two on your inhale, one on your exhale. And, um, and so basically, this overall, like, it seems kind of weird, like, why am I breathing on different feet? That doesn't matter, but when you're putting in multiple, multiple miles and stuff, then um, basically, over time, it's gonna put less stress on your joints, you're gonna have more longevity in your career as a runner, and it creates a more smoother and sustainable form where you can flow and you're kind of, you know, running at your pace. And so, yeah, so I thought it was cool to, like, pacing, you know, when you're running. Maybe when y'all run, I don't know how many y'all run out there, but sometimes I'll catch myself, like, singing, um, what was I singing? The other day I was singing um, City Called Heaven. I was like, I am a pilgrim. You know, it's just like all, all the time, like it's an easy thing to distract yourself. And that kind of leads us into the next slide. And so how heart rate VO2 max. So there's this case study done by Vanderbilt University, anchor down. Um, and so basically the National Library of Medicine, uh, they published this results. And so the exercise protocol that they like uh, adhered on these subjects it was a 30 minute seated rest for a control period followed by 30 minute, 30 minutes of submaximal cycling exercise and then a 35 minute recovery period and so basically what they would do um, is they would measure their rpe and their vo2 max and their heart rate for all these exercises and then um, for y'all that don't know what the vo2 max is it's basically just the amount of volume that you're um, the, the amount of volume of oxygen that your body uses when exercising at your peak performance. And so the high, basically like, when you have a higher VO2 max, it means that you're like more success as an athlete and everything. So there's a lot of studies that go around and a lot of medical experts and studies that can help 
things that help increase your VO2 max. And so what they found was that the VO2 max, the heart rate, the RPE, they were all, um, they all went up when, when music stimuli was introduced into the system. And so they kind of concluded that music evokes the, this distracting effect and uh, it decreases the influence of stress caused by fatigue in certain exercises. And I thought, well, that was like really cool, you know? So if you're ever looking around and like, there's people that are running around the park and have their earbuds in and they're like, you look kind of silly, you know what I mean? But they're actually gonna like, well, like, you know, not, not silly, but like, you know, just like, you're like, why, 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 why would we listen to music and everything and like run outside? It's like, it's kind of like a distracting effect and I think it's kind of cool to like, So this is the Player Squire. They performed this year on America's Got Talent. They're made out of retired and current NFL members, and they've been singing the Super Bowls um, at Super Bowl celebrations every year since uh, 2008. And yeah, I just wanted to play a little bit. 